Blog Talk Radio. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silent, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no secret is revealed. That is why the Athenian lawmaker Sol decreed a crime for any citizen to shrink from controversy. I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. Confident that with your help, man will be what he was born to be, free and independent. Welcome to Galactic Earth Fusion, the program that discusses the normal, the paranormal, the natural, the supernatural, the organic to know the inorganic, the weird, the wonderful, all things outrageous, strange, upbeat, and cutting edge. Supporting our local communities, our internet families, and all forms of sovereign media from around the globe, Broadcasting to you from the heart of the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains of Western North Carolina, just minutes from Asheville, land of the sky. I'm your host, Missy Hill, and Soda and I are bundled up today together. We do have the uh, infrared heater going, but not the wood stove like Andrew has, which we are going to hear about just shortly. With anything that can happen in this time of year as winter is approaching, why not check out the Sunshine Simple Generator for the home, the Sunshine Simple Solar Generator, and tell Mobius and Joshua about Missy and Galactic Earth Fusion. And you can go to www.sunshinesimple.com. It is a really good alternative when anything can happen in these times. And also check out the show. I took a break off last week, but on the 31st had a special show the Weird or What Fact or Fake show with Mobius where we discuss current events. So go back and listen to that show. And next week, we are going to have Franco Di Nicola. So stay posted for that. But I am so excited about today's show. We have Andrew Bardis. For those of you who don't know Andrew, probably most of you do, because he's been a regular on Chris Hale's show, which is the Galactic Historian, the Walking in Energy with Michael Monk also. He has a bunch of YouTube videos out there with Lance White, which are awesome. But just a quick brief bio about him at age nine. When he was at a baseball game, he downloaded 83,000 plus people's Akashic records, and he would later become, at this time, what is known as the Galactic Historian. And I had the pleasure of meeting Andrew when I was down at the Atlantis Conference, the Sarasota event last month. Has that already been a month ago? I just can't believe it. Well, anyway, without any further ado, I am going to welcome Andrew to the show with, uh, welcome, Andrew, to Galactic Earth Fusion. I guess you're unmuting yourself. I'm looking at yes. my screen here. Yes, hey, Andrew, how are you doing hey. today? Good. How are you doing today? Thank you very much for having me on. And it's been a month and two days since Return to Atlantis. Oh, my God, I can't believe it. So how are you doing on a physical level, and how is it out in Mount Shasta before we recap the Sarasota event a little bit? 
I've been doing good on a physical level. I basically take the, took the last four weeks off to rest and recover from a very fast and very busy year. As many people know, the Return to Atlantis event was a very high-energy event. And at the end of it, people were taking threads of unity consciousness home, home with them, as were many other people on that day from many other power places around the world. It was such a unique and beautiful experience. And to go from there to Mount Shasta, um, where it all began for me, where the videos with Lance White and where I had an event with Bob Potter. And coming back here was just a tremendous rebirthing experience. Uh, I myself have been doing an extended detox and just taking care of myself and then picking up on readings and getting ready to do interviews. And you're the first interview I've done in um, 30 days. Okay, I thought so because, you know, I went back and I was doing some Googling today of, you know, uh, Chris and everything. Chris and Hope also were on my show. That was a few weeks back. So people can go back and look for that, too, in the podcast. I don't remember the name of the show, but I can repost it again to my Facebook page and your page, too, as well. Well, I appreciate that, Andrew. I'm glad that you are back in the saddle for doing interviews and you get to come on my show first. That's that's awesome. Well, Missy, thank you for the opportunity. I mean, when I met you in Sarasota for the event and I met Soda, I mean, I just saw two wonderful souls. And uh, I'm so glad and so blessed to have, have you both come, in, come into meeting us this go-around versus domination and control. Yes, yes. Let's talk a little bit about Sarasota after we hear a little bit about the wood stove. Because you said you were, I just want to hear a little bit about where you are in Shasta and what's going on there because it sounded very cozy that you were in fire ceremony constantly. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we're able to find a, a four-bedroom house here that's a, uh, a vacation rental. And since it's not very busy out here in the winter, we're able to make an extended deal on a fully furnished home that has this gigantic uh, wood-burning stove inside it. And it keeps the whole house warm. It's got, it's got a basement and a second floor. And uh, we've been in continual fire ceremony. We've got uh, two cords of wood, and we prayed over the vast majority of the wood. And as we bring wood inside, we have individual prayers that are over it. So this is the idea of a, we're always in a fire ceremony with a hearthstone here. Mm, that's nice. That's really, really, oh, yeah, I'm thinking we need to get one of those, too. But anyway, so we've gone from what we were considered quite warm when I got to meet you to quite cool now. So you yeah, got from to stand 80s to nice 40. Little... <laughs> what was that? From the 80s in Florida to the 40s in Shasta. To the 40s in Shasta. It's about the same here in western North Carolina you know, at night. So, yeah, we're kind of on the same there as the wheel of the year is turning and the days are getting shorter. So tell us, as a recap, from your experience, what happened in Sarasota? I know, for me, it's, uh, it was a very high-energy event. However, after coming home from that event, my physical body really had to do a lot of recuperating, and I can't even say I really started to recuperate until a couple days ago from that event. <laughs> Well, the return the return to Atlantis event was was the the movers and shakers in the soul world. That's not just us who physically were there. These are other entities. The movers and the shakers were in alignment with a migration pattern. That migration pattern was saying graduation date, people coming together in a sovereign expression. And return to Atlantis was the sovereign expression of the of the collective consciousness saying we are triggering our our, our perspective of an awakening event. And those are the people that are expressed through the macros work with us as individuals on a micro level level to form communities. Uh, much of my speech was about getting people to come together to identify what love is, what peace is, what hatred is, to what is sovereignty, what is free will, and then introduce, introduce Chris and Hope, and, um, and then you have a teal that followed up, and you had Lisa Renee that was before that, and Tom Lesher, who did an amazing, amazing, amazing ritual with the, with the, with the putting together the astrology wheel, and then you start off with Laura Magdalene seven very powerful energies coming together at a, at a very mystical point in human history. It's known as the Sangral, the place where Earth's spirit entered the physical body of Earth. And there we were, millions of years later, honoring Earth consciousness and unity consciousness through individual expressions who had come together for a 3D matrix event. 
which has many repercussions throughout the spirit world. You know, as yeah. for people, as for people coming home ill from it, the entire event was tried to was tried to be stopped from the very beginning, simply because any time you have a group of powerful people moving together, you change the energetic field of the world. This happens every day with the government personalities. The government personalities under a f limited form of mind control, so they don't gather into places unless the system wants them to, so that they can harvest energy. This event of us coming together was an event they cannot harvest from because it was generated by our sovereign free will soul expression through a sovereign free will expression through the matrix. Therefore, they cannot eliminate its experience, but they can try to make it be full of drama or full of hate or full of you know, issues with uh, whatever would arise for putting on an event. And the event went off flawless. It started with Dr. Dream's activation that cleansed and purified everyone. And from that point forth, each person put their their bolt of energy forward until finally the hurricane, which was mirroring, mirroring the entire event the whole time, passed over into the tropic waters and then on up into Georgia and brought its cleansing energy. So the weather event was very much linked to that of Return to Atlantis, the collective conscious saying this event will go on. People were tired afterwards. Yes, you were, because there was a whole lot of spirits that were putting their energies forward to hold space, hold the very tough space for a disunity reality, unraveling its paradoxes to understand that it's a unity consciousness species in the dream world. And the only way to bridge that separation is to find a way for the dream world to become physical for a definition of infinity. It also coincided with the government shutdown, which I find very yep. interesting. And we just had the largest typhoon in history ever recorded just hit the Philippines a few days ago. That is a consciousness mm -hmm. exploration event. That is the uncollective consciousness manifesting into collective consciousness, showing the anger and rage of the, of the spirit world as well as the physical expression of human beings who understand they're under domination and control, but their I am presence is unaware of how deep the programming goes. Mm -hmm. Now, we've talked before privately about architecture programming. Yes. And architecture programming is one of those things that the system of domination and control can instill software into your liver or into your lungs or into your tailbone. And you would never know it, no matter how strong of an I am presence you are, who daily would daily clean your field. These things are designed to be very shadowy, to be camouflaged until one day when you're at a stoplight and somebody cuts you off or you're just at a point where you're drained and your physical ion presence is not as much there. These things trigger and become active and are part of your system and stay dormant until the next opportunity of anger or an expression of frustration. And then they trigger your adrenal glands to become overactive. And then you're caught in a cycle, repetitive cycle. That's the fundamentals of oh, yeah. a lot of this programming. And when human beings begin to understand etheric broadcasting is the transmitters for this, our awakening process will be much, much simpler. 80% mm -hmm. of the unclean and unclear thoughts that are being put forward through the etheric broadcasting are designed to make you attract etheric parasites so you're out at full energy during a time of an awakening where you should have be pulling energy in from the earth around you. And Earth will be recycling its infinite dream source, feeding all the plants and the animals, or the environment itself that's feeding our Earth change, because we are in the birth moment. We're at the time the menstrual cycle is over, the pregnancy is done, and we are the first consciousness birth species coming back into unity consciousness since Earth's great series of menstrual mistakes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Keep going. Did you have, did you have, do you have questions specific on the menstrual cycle? Yeah, yes, I do. I wasn't going to go there yet, but maybe I will. Uh, uh, okay, we will go there first. For you to explain, first of all, what these, um, wait a minute, what the Mother Earth's womb chakras exactly are for the listening audience that doesn't know, and how it ties into certain spots around the equator, 
uh, the, the, the purpose of the North Pole, you know, as far as the Dreamtime and the Aurora Borealis, the South okay. Pole and the different energies with all that, because you're going there anyway. We'll start there. Okay. Well, our world, when it was originally designed, was designed to be a seventh dimensional galactic seed planet. Its exact purpose was to create DNA wisdom or knowledge and then upload it to a blank Akashic Record world planet so that when souls began to incarnate on a new planet, they had a list of things to incarnate in, from rocks to birds to trees to, to whatever was going to be used as the vehicle for consciousness holding for consciousness expedition. Trees would be a consciousness holding ex ex uh, concept and rocks or birds would be a consciousness exploration aspect. Earth's purpose had multiple womb chakras, well over 200. Now that's an understanding of how rare that is. If you look at the combination of all of the galaxies in play here and all of the universe that's in play here in our, in our, in our, in our little field of play, there are maybe 10 total worlds that have three or four or one or two boom chakras, and that's it. Earth has over 200. Okay? That's the difference between our world and 99.9% in .9 of the rest of the universe. There are other planets that will every hundred years or every million years or every billion years, they'll spawn one womb chakra, and then they'll be dormant again for many millions of years. And this is a system that's built within all planetary consciousness is to complete DNA wisdom. So there's a, always an ever-evolving new thing, new experience to have because we live in an experiential free will universe and therefore need experiences to go and have. If you've never been a house cat before and you're coming from another galaxy and you all of a sudden had this chance to be a house cat here on Earth, you may really like that experience and so on and so forth. Some may like war, some may like this, some may, may like painting oil paints on Earth as opposed to using the same kind of paint on their home world because there's more of an experiential body in the human skin suit versus the skin suit they were wearing on another world. This is why Earth's technology has been so sought of after also. To interfunction with 200 womb chakras, your skin suits must be have tuned to the consciousness of the planet. Therefore, the technology that everyone in the universe is seeking is literally in our skin suit. It is the DNA, it is the technology that allows us to interact with the sentience of a planet. Mm-hmm, yes. Okay. Now, the womb chakras go through a series of awakening and closings. They trigger the surface population that are within 180 kilometers or miles, I'm sorry, 180 miles of the center of the womb chakra will begin to be activated at the soul level and at the DNA level to begin to accept the rules of reality creation, which are set up by Earth's dream time. And their dream time is what links every human being into unity consciousness. It's where we have a global unity consciousness or a global dream time society that comes together in infinite moments in, of no time and then makes a series of contracts and agreements that all parties accept all parties for truth. And that is the beginning of the unity consciousness pods. Earth's menstrual cycle has been disrupted over many millions of years, so it could not put forth its part of the dream world that completes the unity consciousness pods. It's essentially the placenta that will house us as a unity consciousness species from the rest of the universe's interference. So this placenta is waiting to be born around us. And the lack of a menstrual cycle, the war over Syria, Syria, Iraq, and Iran, there are a, a bundle of boom chakras there, and that's where the, womb, the actual menstrual cycle, physical menstrual cycle of Earth begins. And they have war on the surface of that, and so they're holding back the menstrual cycle from creating that placenta. And as soon as that, the one in Syria finishes its full activation, um, the one in Mount Fuji will open up, and then the one just outside of um, Bali will open up, and then a series of others in and around the African and sub-Saharan -sub African continents will up, open up, and then the Caribbean, up the Mississippi, and on through Canada into Alaska, reconnect to Fuji, and then Australia, and South America will be the last parts. And there'll be a bursting of knowledge and wisdom of dream time societies who have been waiting many millions of years to be reunited with their soul family who they've been denied time and existence with. 
this is where I speak about sovereign free will to accept your soul family. Your soul family has been pried away from you by the system of domination and control, which has developed etheric technology and physical technology and medical technology that eliminates certain types of soul families from living in this world, which is a violation of the sovereign free will of this planet. But this planet's incarnation grid and reincarnation grid have been hijacked. So it's very difficult to get past a system that looks for certain soul families and rejects them from the astral cities. So they keep breeding in there the types of souls that easily get caught into reincarnation. So how does one find their soul family? It's an inner heart You're discernment. To area. It's your inner heart discerning energies. Heart discernment is one of the most basic and yet advanced skills everyone will have in unity consciousness. There are heart conscious people that can just know when they're being lied to or they're being taken advantage of, and many of them let that go on. We're coming to a point where heart discernment is going to be speaking louder than mind discernment or sex discernment or any of the other discernments we've learned through disunity reality. At heart resonance, we can look at a person and not have to see energy and just know from the vibration of their heart and their expression of their words and body language, truth. Truth that doesn't match my vibration of heart expression and connection is to earth. If it doesn't, then they are not within your field of perspective. And if it does, they are in the alignment of unity wisdom. Mm. And you can be soul family with many different groups. What if you're, say, a Correct. wanderer? There's, and, and Because I think that's your role, right? Families. To be in many different soul families at once. Correct. I purposely chose... Correct. I purposely chose over many millions of years to be in soul family with every one of the primary soul families that's mass investing here. It's all about an understanding of outbreeding another group of people. There is a discovery of technology that allows physical body people to be manifested into energy body. Their, bo their physical bodies disappear and become energy. And then you can insert through technology that person turned into energy into the astral matrix of a planet and it then goes through the incarnation process and is born on that world. That is an unnatural process that was discovered by technology. And since the universe is a 100% free will universe, they allow this technology to go through and have not limited it in many, over many, many different scopes. What this also means is a new type of warfare was discovered where you could literally outbreed the surface population of any world simply by mass investing people who were physical people and become energy people and then insert them in a grid, again, many of them against their free will, with mental programming that makes them warriors or hyper-aggressives or rapid entropy type people. Domination and control spread among many millions of worlds, but finally there are people that stood up in heart discernment and became what's called heart discernment warriors who began to cut through the truth of programming and were able to awaken people to the truth of being used by usury spirits that had been taken over many different millions of worlds because these usury spirits were promised great vast amounts of free energy and the ability to feed on an entire population that called them a god. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Much of the god-goddess concept. And then the universe developed what's called the divinity path, which was to, to counter this god-demigod concept or goddess concept. People doing real work on a divinity path that would take up a namesake and then jump throughout different times of history and continue a namesake so there, there was a positive myth of positive change instead of the negative myth of fake change always within the structure of our, our oral traditions until finally they took our oral traditions away and disconnected us even from our genetic lineage stories. Okay, where we are now in time, I want to discuss the, um, we're in the end game. You know, sometimes you go from the beginning to the end, I kind of want to work our way backwards from where we are now back to uh, the beginning, the time of 2011 through 2014 is extremely important. 
And yes. the thing called the event and our graduation, I want you to tell us what that looks like from where we are now, uh, if there's a timeline and the changes that are going to happen with our physical bodies, changes with the earth, with the dismantling of some of these structures. OK. Well, I'm going to use some metaphor. You have a, a, a billion trains of belief systems on a crash course into a self-expressive unity consciousness. Now, that metaphor, a train of belief systems, that means the people that are a part of that belief system occupy that train. There's several, several, seven billion or a billion type belief systems all heading for a crash course. So what is going to happen? Belief systems are going to encounter belief systems. And positive and negative expressions of polarity are going to happen, mostly at a soul level. And as your soul experiences the extremes of dual polarity, it'll begin to do two dream worlds, the physical 3D world that your I am presence is in, and then your higher self interaction with all of the soul family that's completed in the astral world, looking for a way for the physical body and the 3D I am self to find presence with its higher self to fit us an exchange of soul codes so the rest of the soul family can be born in your family. That is the nuts and bolts of the event where the codes are completed, where the incarnation and reincarnation process can no longer be hijacked because there's a living population with, on the surface with all the codes that it takes to, for any soul to be born into Earth instead of the false code that's been put into, put into our light matrix that limits part of our free will, that limits part of our expression here. And with that gone, it's literally the harness that's on the human skeletal frame that's on your medulla oblongata, it's on your cerebrum, and your cerebellum, and your third eye. That energetic harness will be taken off. Mm, that's the awakening. Nice. And we become very aware of how restricting that harness was. As much as 12 to 15% of your past lives begin to come aware to you. Now, how one deals with that is their own individual experience in the event. I've described before the, the event, you know, there are kids that will be at their breakfast table you know, before high school or in the morning, and they'll be saying, I had a dream this morning. And the other person, man, I had the same dream. And a third, fourth, and a fifth person at the table will say, I had the same dream. And that will start whisper campaigns. And there's nothing the system can do can stop that. You can't stop two people on the side of the street having deja vu of each other having deja vu. It can't stop two moms you know, that are, are at a soccer game and stand up to cheer for their kid at the same time and realize they're cheering for each other's kid separate, that they mistake their own kid and they both look. <laughs> Things like that. Unity moments that cannot be denied. Paranormal moments that cannot be denied. You know, people in the hospital from a car accident the night before and when the doctor or nurse comes in in the morning, their wounds are healed because they dream themselves never being in the accident or healing the whole wounds. That's the event. It's at a very individual human level. The perspective of the big outlook so people can grasp the context. Well, if you don't understand the context that you live in, you can't explain the context of what people are asking questions to. And that is very the very nature of the event. What is the context of your existence? What is your belief system? And that's how the event will affect you, positively or negatively, based off of what you believe. Do you see like what's called a bifurcation of time where there's a, a split in the consciousness with, say, certain, maybe around these womb shock, a certain ascending hub, say, and, and maybe descending, but in the same space where uh, Earth, certain Earth. cities will be at like the higher vibrational city of sacred geometry and other ones won't, and maybe you explain it this way because they're dreaming that before it happens? Correct. And also time will no longer be a social agreement. It will be a universal expression and a universal science that reflects how a solar system goes around 
a galactic circle that has a galactic central sun. And there are spots in this, this orbit that the, the space is very dense and the orbit slows down, and there are spots that are very light and the orbit speeds up. And when you go around all of the different, different parts of the, of the wheel and you come to where you started again, that's a galactic or a galactic or universal expression of a cycle. We human beings use time as a social agreement based off the rise and fall of the sun, when in fact the rise and fall of the sun changes every, every year. It's not accurate. Our expression is consciousness. Light and dark is an expression of consciousness, the balance between the two dream worlds. They separated our dream worlds 489,000 years ago, so one side of the face of the earth that's facing the sun isn't awakened and it's not dreaming as a mass society. The opposite side that's in darkness is dreaming, the mass the vast majority of the population is dreaming, and that's the nature of the separation of two worlds. The dream times will come together, and time will no longer have an expression of one, two, three, four, five, six. It'll have a universal expression that allows our expression of time as the language to be upscaled. And once our language changes at that upscale moment, we'll be able to perceive these buildings or these uh, different cities you've described of that will be above the womb chakras or in the North Pole Aurora Borealis, which is where the Earth's dreaming mind can manifest and unmanifest anything that it desires. If there needs to be a floating city for people to go and be ambassadors to, there'll be a thousand, enough to handle the entire sentience of the planet and the, those that wish to visit in a neutral format so they can begin to break bread on a soul format to once again be introduced to the many millions of other soul families who have been locked out of existing with other members of soul family. Now, is this uh, dreaming city, say, in the Aurora Borealis, where Earth can manifest and unmanifest something? Is this uh, a way that things like Fukushima can be healed on the planet? Absolutely. Our city, our people in the Uh oh, something's going on. <laughs> Can't hear you. Uh oh, you're cutting out. Andrew? Uh oh, his phone is cutting out. Andrew? Hello? Hello, Andrew. He may just have to call back in. Are you there? Oh, his call has dropped. I'm going to play a meditation just for a second while he's calling back in. Yeah, I'm back. Okay, we got a better now? connection now. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah, every time I go to talk about Fukushima, they don't like it. <laughs> Come on, guys. Get yeah, I, might as well, I want to get some of the, the icky things out of the way that I know people have questions about, which is Fukushima and this uh, grid shut down and not coming from fear. It is good to have a wood stove and some supplies because you never know what could happen. But you're sa we were talking a little bit about this uh, piece of information, uh, something they call it the, uh, I'm trying to think what they call this. They call it a drill. And any time something's called a drill, it really concerns me. But the dates they've actually picked for this are November 13th through the 15th. But I also heard something happened already in the UK it, uh, yesterday. It would have been there 11-11. And it's interesting because that's the Nephilim reversal grid in the 11th dimensional Stargate. But I've not been able to find a story on it. So let's take those two pieces, get them out of the way. Then we can keep the vibe really high the whole time. But, but these are important pieces that do need to be addressed. Okay. <clears throat> Fukushima, before, before the, the old boys got, got their fingers stretched out and, and ended our conversation there, um, there are, there are 
Dreamtime City is set up all over the Fukushima area, all over the Chinese area to deal with pollution. The pollution in China is going to be a very major Dreamtime issue beyond the pollution in Fukushima. Um, there's an ancestral karma that, the, that many of the Asiatic societies will deal with as a cultural expression during Dreamtime, whereas the uh, un United States or American people, their cultural expression will be recovering from being slaves or slave or being enslavers, as well as creating a system of laws that's, that's enslaved and indebted people worldwide. So that'll be a different expression of unity consciousness healing, as will the African tribes or the British people or so on and so forth. They'll all have a different expression as a, as a nation coming into unity, letting go of the concepts of nat nations and patriotism to a single nation. Um, as the factions become more aware of unity consciousness, they begin to fall apart. And, I mean, we're just at a time where you have to realize that Fukushima was a created event. And then somebody tried to uncreate it. And then somebody else who thought it was a really cool idea but didn't create it in the first place recreated it. Then somebody uncreated it. Then somebody recreated it. And then somebody uncreated it. And so finally, tens of thousands of different people were trying to create and uncreate it at the same moment. And it became a massive timeline paradox in which nothing can be done except the energy be expressed on the matrix level while other energy beings came in began absorbing it on the other dimensional levels. It was an attack on the planet. And it was part of the fact that our species has amnesia and is held hostage by a group of very angry, pissed off entities who want control, who want to keep their trade of our skin and our consciousness as part of a commerce of expression to different worlds so that they can keep up a theme of creation and uncreation. You know, it's the light versus the dark, but the light and the dark no longer needs to fight. That's why we were all trapped on this world in the very beginning, to slowly take away all of your free will and to distill down to the very basic, it being they can use their free will or not. If you when want to call an experiment at... here... Go ahead. When I look at it, I actually see it tying in with um, Hiroshima, Pearl Harbor, and the Philadelphia experiment. Do you have anything to say on that? Yeah, you're smart. Smart cookie. The Dragon Triangle is just outside of Japan, which is intimately linked into the the experiments that were done in the done on the Philadelphia in Philadelphia experiment, as well as what was done in Bermuda Triangle, as well as what was done over Egypt, um, Nazi-occupied Egypt. Um, and then the Americans occupied the Suez Canal. You were familiar with these uh, mirrored devices that would protect the Suez Canal? What is it called? They're basically, it's a, it looks like a giant, it's a mirror, reflecting mirror. It's a magician's trick where you take uh, a, a dome. Well, technology. It's not looking glass technology, no. This, oh, this, 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 is okay, a physical, okay. this is a physical piece of technology that was developed by humankind that basically oh. took panels of mirrors that were over a giant searchlight. And those panels were angled, and then the panels would spin on the base of the mirror, creating a strobe effect. Mm. Okay? This technology could have ended the entire aerial assault world worldwide. This technology was limited, limited in time, and which is related directly to the Philadelphia experiment, when members of the U.S. military were trying to time travel and change the date of an introduction of technology. And this is what triggered a macro response of other timeline travel entities who were looking for another event that involved this same type of mirror technology, okay, which could naturally be parts and a, and a big searchlight and a power source to keep the searchlight going. And that technology can create a, a light body vibration that can prevent UFOs from even coming onto the surface of Earth. Anything that's a light body transference, this piece of technology can literally prevent it from existing here. It pushes it out. Uh -huh. This is what is related to the Japanese Fukushima, this technology. Uh -huh. It is such an advancing in technology that should have brought peace to our world that it brought the opposite paradox, which results into Fukushima, because 
Each event had to be erased, erased and recreated, erased and recreated, erased and recreated, and at times things change. They deviate from the original purpose. So from these mirrored things that were over, Fukush over, over the Suez Canal, it translates through the relations of soul families who are trying to bring this technology back through to a Fukushima disaster which is the way to clean up the ancestral karma of our world. It's macro beings taking micro events and playing with them on the timeline so that in a future point in a timeline you can actually have something very positive for an entire cultural expression, which is, what the, is the opposite of what the system of domination and control is doing. It's limiting cultural expression and then harvesting off of its people. Mm -hmm. Are you there? Yes, yes. I, I just didn't know if you were still going. Okay. I'm just taking it in and assimilating it um, because it makes me think of some other uh, timelines and pieces which I want to look at, uh, Nazi timelines well, and, time and me, so forth. Let me talk... Let me talk about timelines for a second. For people that don't regularly listen to me, I can perceive timelines, and you can perceive them. Everyone can perceive timelines. It's just a matter of making sense of them from the perspective that you're coming from. Um, I'm functioning with the Acacia record of this world and 20,000 other worlds, so the scale in which I, I perceive things is from a very high perspective. Not that the energy is any vibrating higher or lower. It's from a macro being's look at our micro world and then translating what the macro expresses, expression is to this micro expression so that we can come to an understanding of how deep our own expression goes, and yet we don't know about it because we've had our species with amnesia. We've forgotten who we are. How, how do you tell with a person of amnesia who they, pers who they were? They literally cannot remember. There will always be distrust and discord. Mm -hmm. I have felt recently since this Sarasota event that I actually have gone back into 2012 and had to adjust the 2012 timeline. I don't even know what that means exactly, but it was like seeing something to do with spin ratios and different things and actually having to revisit some of this uh, 2012 thing on a collective level because there's like, yep. I see it as like a chess sure. match where there's move, counter move, move, counter move, we make a move, somebody else makes yep. a move and this thing and I think it has something to do with the light, dark and the neutral. Yep, it also has to do with you recovering your soul shards that have been leapfrogging in time, and some of them may have missed quite a few leapfrogs, and it took a time in time for them to catch up into you who had already experienced 2012, so you could go back and fix a mistake a leapfrogger would make or prevent them or just unifying with that soul shard so it doesn't make additional mistakes and change your choices. Mm -hmm. Many, many, many okay. people experienced going back to 2012 and changing things or just holding space so nothing would be changed. Yeah, that too, because it was like a seed time. And then we went through some yucky in February. Yeah, let's tie this in with comets, because a lot of people have also been making, uh, I mean, not too big of a deal, but around the time that uh, Pope Francis, I think this is it Francis, that came in, there was some kind of comet or uh, asteroid or something going on. Now there's this ice on. I don't think it's anything, but I do want to address it as well as, like I said, this grid thing, which I must wonder if this grid thing has something to do with this leapfrogging through time and, and, and like some kind of cleanup. All of it does. All of it does. See, when you're trying to keep fake time. Now, you've heard, you've probably heard, if anyone has heard me before, I talk about time and no time. We live on a social agreement, and they can make what's called fake timelines, and we call these alternate timelines, and we believe them because we're supposed to be multidimensional beings who can function in more than one world or many dozens of dream worlds at the same time. And they can create these fake timelines that we invest in, and all of a sudden, spoof, we're separated from our physical body, and we're two beings, not one. And after a while, they can collapse that old uh, timeline, and you would never know where you're at again. 
Now, doing that, you will do your people timeline sick. And when you become timeline sick, you break into shards, and then those shards reunify. And as those shards reunify, you reform a sovereign matrix. And the system of domination and control has sacred geometry cities that look for sovereign matrix souls that are coming back together, and it tries to prevent them from doing that. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is nuts and bolts mechanics of incarnation here. When you get down to the nuts and bolts and mechanics of incarnation, our expression of sovereignty as an awakening experience, experience is literally the learning curve of how to be sovereign, sentient beings, each with an individual reality bubble that we create our own rules in, and no one else can interact in that sacred space unless we give them permission. So there'll no longer be just one singular reality at all. There'll be many millions of local realities where people will come together in communities and define the reality rules. That is the way we as a species originally lived, and that's what we will return to. So Fukushima is a way for a cultural expression to rapidly deal with ancestral karma. 9-11, um, a different scenario, though it involved timeline, timeline corruption and timeline they're basically watching 10,000 species with different time travel technology affect a single object for a global news time event that was designed by, by a, as a mass soul-based propaganda that would stretch over many different dimensions because they knew there were people leapfrogging the time and observing the future and writing books in the past. And if they were able to create a shock and awe event that had timeline technology written all over it, these, you know, the Nostradamus in the past would write this about this, or this guy would write that about that, and create self-fulfilling prophecies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, that's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> Fukushima, ancestral karma. 9-11 the biggest shock and awe campaign live on TV and spiritual TV in the history of our universe that had a macro expression that even turned the, the eye of the prime creator this way. Okay? Okay, I got There are many other now. events that the same thing. Go ahead. Who is our prime creator? And where does our okay. prime creator come from? According to your sources. Well, this, is one of, this is one of those context questions. What kind of world do you live in? Are you a micro expression of your soul or are you a macro expression of your soul? Multidimensional. Okay, but do you know what you're doing on the other side of the infinite universe of source of information? Oh, I didn't hear what you said. Oh no, it, it was it was getting a little bit uh, uh, choppy again. Single source stream of infinite information in the awake in the dream world, or is there a separation between the two of you? Mm -hmm. As long as there is a separation, you cannot understand the infinite context. And you're asking about who the prime creator is. It's an infinite context that has no id, no ego, and no sentience. It is an expression of all sentience kind. And what it does is hold space in the universe for synchronicities to happen amongst all of its micro-expressions that are solar systems. And then the micro-beings that offer contracts for that to micro upon micro upon micro uh, expression. You know, we have ants that live here in this world, and they're a micro-expression of this world. Human beings are a macro-expression of this world. And then there's a scale above that where the thunder beings are a macro-expression of the higher world, so on and so forth. The prime creator is an expression of all sentient kind in a unity format, where unity kind is looking for the experiences of, of the universe, and this prime creator makes sure that there are always new experiences and is a management system of energy that creates synchronicities. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. That's the best way to explain prime creator. 
What is happening with the archons and the planets? I feel they're going through some changes. When I look at stars, they become displaced. They're not in the places they usually are, like, say, the Big Dipper and other ones. They kind of move around. And I know there's changes. And I know that you've discussed this before. But where would you say we are now with some of these changes and some of these dismantlings and how it's affecting planets? Well, right now, we've got about 15,000 of the best reality programmers trying to take apart the foundational aspects of domination and control at the soul contract level. None of this can exist without soul contracts. Whether you believe in that concept or not, it, or a version of contrast and agreements, we agreed to be here. We agreed to follow through with some part of this existence to be here. And when it got to a point where we created so many paradoxes, the upper management system of the energy came in and set in a cycle that said all of this will find remedy and resolve in a spiritual court of equity at a moment when this planet has finished X number of turns around the galactic central sun, which gave a countdown clock for the rest of the universal beings to figure out how to straighten up the mistakes they created on this world with micro beings all of a sudden learning macro skills, micro beings able to trans transport themselves anywhere in the universe when they shouldn't have been able to do that until they became macro beings. Mm -hmm. This makes me, I know you've answered this before, but I want to hear it again. And for this audience, who Yeshua or Jesus, because I actually had people specifically ask me this, ask you uh, about Jesus, Yeshua, who is he from your sources, and uh, Mary Magdalene. And how well, that fits Jesus was a the person. puzzle of what's going on here. Jesus was a person who also understood that his entire message would be hijacked. From before he was oh, even yeah. born, he knew that his message would be hijacked. You know, the books that are written based off of Jesus, the vast majority of them are 400 years after he died. They are not his true expression. You add in the fact that there are time travelers who can change a person's words literally, and say this is the first person to count of Thomas, this guy or that guy, who was a disciple, so on and so forth. The history can be altered in every generation or every two generations. You have a, an oral historian that passes down this wisdom because there were no books then. Basically, one, four or five families may have shared one Bible, or one family got to a point where one family shared one Bible, and that was literally the only book they ever read. Therefore, that was their belief system. The enforcing of that belief system is the unraveling of different belief systems where they're all coming into this mass crush. So, how do I put this? Jesus was a person that had incredible skills. And the light beings who knew who these words were going to be hijacked created the opposite effect, created very miraculous events like the cross. He was never on the cross. That was something put there to induce suffering. And there's no need to suffer when the expression of, the, of, of religion. Religion isn't suffering, it's, it's exploration and expanding. And that's how his message was taken over. As a person, he traveled the world. The world was still very interconnected there. If you were in South America and wanted to come to Egypt, you could do that all the way up to about 900 AD before the reality rules had changed because our world wasn't a single reality then. The different churches were conquering each of the local realities one by one by one by one. You also see the uh, the crucifixion as that this whole planet and all of us were crucified at the seventh dimensional level and brought down to a three D level. Um, that's not a ling linguistic pattern I would like to use. Um, not everyone was crucified. It was those that were a part of that, that grid of belief system at that time. When the first Gutenberg Bible came out, there maybe it was 3% saturation of, of books to the population in the world. By the time you get to 1800, there's about 11% saturation of books. So only 11% of that population had been converted through that book expression that had generational changes in it. So it took all the way until mass media of the 40s, 50s, and 60s for the church movement to be able to actually use the energies of those reversal grids as more and more and more people got entangled to a belief system that had a reversal grid on it in the first place 
because the light beings weren't able to maintain the light portals, as well as the dark beings creating dark portals within the belief system alone. So that's the reversal grid you talk, you're talking about. Very yeah, well said. From that. I should have said the... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say probably so a better choice of words would have been implants instead of crucifixion, but you, you covered it. You Correct. explained it perfect, and perfect linguistics the, there. The, the implants that they use are etheric implants based off of the belief system because there is a version of the Bible that that is written in sacred geometry format that is a living, breathing expression. This is how the reality sees the Bible code. Um, mm -hmm. If you were to get to some to the original text, which are a hyperdimensional text, which is basically a time travel document that can update and change itself based off of perceptions of timelines, because there's tens of thousands of multidimensional entities in the astral world that are computing all the different changes that were changed, made by all the different monks throughout the years, and then calculating how this belief system spreads among soul families, and then is retained in your cellular memory and from the reincarnation, from the forced reincarnation back into the system of domination and control. They're trying to make you remember the experiences they want through these reversal grids. Okay, now as you're talking, I'm actually starting to see like a migration pattern. Okay, my screen went down. I need to bring my screen up. <coughs> a migration pattern and wanting to go into the hollow earth, the Argartha, Argartha network. Yes. Now, and there'll the be tunnel, a certain percent of our population. everything that you have to say about tunnels and, and underground. A certain percentage of our population will go underground because they'll have a stronger earth connection to connect to the dreaming world of earth to heal themselves of the etheric harness that's put onto our medullas and onto our brains. And then there'll be other, percent, other people that will learn how to daydream effective enough that they'll have a limited ability to operate in an air city. And Air City is a concept that was created by the Lemurians, which is takes matter and makes it loosely connected where you can walk amongst it and on it, and it has touch and feel to it, but it is very airy matter, and it exists in the highest parts of the stratospheres above the Aurora Borealis and can influence the Aurora Borealis. The Aurora Borealis, by science definition, happens when, when high energy particles from the sun get attracted to Earth's magnetic field and then that magnetic field lights up and creates the different colors. When in fact, that's the consciousness of our planet interacting with the consciousness expression of the sun that's constantly coming to us. And when we dream into the North Pole Aurora Borealis, we are dreaming with that planetary expression that's accepting solar expression. And we aid in unity consciousness birth and through creating of dream worlds to the high energy frequencies of the sun. The air cities create the same concept and allow people in a soul family expression to daydream themselves into a big air city and to have, in an hour of time on Earth, five or six weeks of getting to know each other. Now, how will we That's travel how we begin to come cities. together. Well, do you see the, the Western North Carolina here as one of these air cities and also where you are at, in Shasta as an there'll, air city? There'll, although be, there'll be millions of air cities. Millions of air cities. Air cities are going to be temporary places of meeting because they're soul family members you haven't met in millions of years. And maybe they just want to literally say, hi, I exist, and I know you're going through an awakening. And when it comes time in galactic expression for you to meet, I'd just like you to know that I still exist. And then you'll have others that are desperate to meet right away because their species is near death and they need your DNA wisdom through your earth expression to heal their ancestral karma. Is Shambhala uh, an example of an air city? Yes. Okay. So people have an understanding what it, that is. Okay, uh, now what about these inner earth uh, tunnels where you could travel from one spot to the earth, you know, where it would take months. You could do it in a, in a few days, say. Um, you could actually do it, travel within a few hours. That system was in effect all the way until about 8,500 B.C., where the energy portals were finally shut down, so the tunnels, tunnels were weren't functioning correct anymore. Those will come back online as the grid of Earth, the surface grid of Earth, 
the, the etheric broadcasting, the cell phone towels, and the harps are taken off because those are by design to meant to break up the energy so it doesn't coalesce into unity consciousness fields. We as human beings are constantly broadcasting that we are unity consciousness species, but our culture has disconnected us from that. Inevitably, we will find our way back. And to prevent our, us from finding our way back, they created electrical wires that are above the surface that disrupt us, the telephone concepts, the internet, so on and so forth, broadcast towers, to prevent us from coming together to coalesce as energy. And as these systems are, are shielded properly so we can come together and the etheric broadcasting has taken off, we as a people will naturally form communities and migrate to the right and perfect stargate that we incarnated into this world from the first time, from our first incarnation. Wow. There's just so many pieces here. <laughs> I know. You're going to be so speaking, many. A lot of people are going to be picking this interview across, apart for, for weeks. There's stuff in here I haven't spoken about. And... I know you, and I know the type of listening audience that's there, as well as the potential of the listening audience that's going to be passed around here. This is me ha opening up the toolbox and putting out absolutely everything there for people to discern from their own hearts. I don't wish to battle with factions. I, I, Return to Atlantis was a, a, a lesson in factionism, and the people that came there broke factionism. And what we're taking away from that is how to break factionism. Yes, and sharing the toolbox. So let's discuss what sharing the toolbox actually looks like. Okay. Well, first of all, it inv involves the concept that everyone has a belief system, and each belief system has the right to be true. No one belief system is all-encompassing truth. Two, we are universal citizens on a universal expression planet. We are not micro-beings at the center of the universe. We have a global dream time society that has been coexisting with us, and we have to learn to come together with it for our expression of unity consciousness to be complete so the individuals can do their part of the expression, which is literally breaking bread. If a Muslim man breaks bread with a, an Israelite man, or a white guy and a black guy sit down and share, share a drink and say, we can put our, 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 our energies aside no matter what, because we realize we've all been taken advantage of by using agreements against us. Exactly, because if, if us and the light working community can't get along, how are we going to fix the world and, and uh, get everything else that we're going through with governments and you know, grid shutdowns and government shutdowns and all these things and the monetary enslavement. I mean, we need to get along within our light working communities. And hear the clicking in the phone? <laughs> yeah. Well, I knew they were going to come. It's inevitable, honestly. You know, you know, they got jobs. They got kids to feed. And you know what? What are they really, really going to do by, by interrupting this or, or listening to us? Generate mm -hmm. more work for themselves? Well, maybe I should say something that will give all these guys overtime so that they can't go home and visit their family. There's one that's particularly listening. His name is Matthew. And you have a brand new kid, and you've only seen her, their daughter three times in the last 11 months because you keep getting pulled in and keep getting pulled in and keep getting pulled in, overseeing all of this stuff. Do you want to continue that? Yeah, now you're worried if uh, you're going to get written up in your paperwork, as I mentioned you on air. You know, let's give Matthew some positive energy. He may not realize how he's being used. And uh, I can say I forgive you, brother. And if you want to join the other side, all you've got to do is not show up to work. Call in sick. all those guys that are listening in. Colin Sick, I know you all have been listening to us in some way, shape, or form, and you know, you know it's true, otherwise they wouldn't be shutting us off. The spiritual contract removal can help a lot of people with a lot of the issues they are experiencing with this domination and control and factions, because they may not realize that there are 
structures that are taking their energy. And that's why they can't see the forest through the trees. They can't see through their lens filter of reality. Because we all have like a lens filter of perception or belief system. And my goal is within myself, I always say I don't want to get I don't want to have any beliefs. I just want to have direct inner knowing and no time, not beliefs about things. But can you talk a little bit about the spiritual contract removal and the importance of it and how it can help these people with uh, you know, crossing faction lines so we can get rid of the factions? Well, we as human beings are born into these false soul families, and these false soul families carry concepts like you're going to be a butcher, you're going to be a horse trader, you're going to be a scientist, you're going to be a bum on the street. Um, we create these archetypes, and then these archetypes can be manipulated by advertising or consumerism and materialism to create all sorts of strange things. You know, the nature of the question how do you get to this limited source, in limited source of information and filter it back into 3D world is literally via the connection to Earth. Your skin suit is the technology everyone in the universe wants. Learn how to use it. Your actual body can connect to the energy body of this entire planet and can manifest and channel the energy with its free will in communion with the planet when it understands that everything is via agreements. Soul contracts are an agreement we came into this planet with. We also agreed in the incarnation and reincarnation grid that our agreements can be altered based upon timeline concepts that were rapidly changing, affecting past versions of us. Whether we know it or not, when we're a part of a government that's a million years old or 90 million years old or 11 million years old, our past lives are still agreeing, agreeing to give away stuff even after that person is dead. So removal of contracts from all government organizations and all existence and timelines is one of those fundamental ways to return your sovereignty. Okay? I have one that's revocation for government, revocation for banking, and revocation for the media systems. If you go to my website, andrewbartzis.com, and you go to the book tab that says spiritual contract removal, you'll see the three of those there. And the way I set it up is what's called creating a spiritual court of equity. If you read the Bible, or any of those are part of that expression, it says God judges in equity. And if you look at the vast majority of other religious expressions, they say that the source doesn't judge. It sees through the eyes of equity. And through the eyes of equity, we find remedy and resolve, not justice or judgment. And when we use the spiritual court of equity, we create a moment of remedy and resolve, not justice and judgment. And those that we ask to be there are other sovereign ancestor spirits, the plants, the animals, the earth, or any galactic mind or planetary mind that you wish to have as a part of the reading of your sovereign free will as a mighty I am presence. As the I am presence or mighty I am self, you state your sovereign free will in the spiritual court of equity with all your ancestors present. So the system of domination and control or some other offending entity or energy system, you remove its contracts from its ability to interact with you on a soul layer or spiritual layer or spiritual contract layer. And as you begin to enforce this into your belief system, literally these entities cannot function with you. All of the energy harvesting entities that are part of the government prop, uh, system, if we were to en masse revoke government contracts with energy harvesting entities, they couldn't touch you. But they don't want you to know that because ultimately it means you are in an empowered state or I am present state. And the I am present states their sovereign free will and can direct their soul energy, their soul matrixes, to create effects in time that can literally counter the effects of other beings who are leapfrogging through time. Talk, uh, talk about how this ties into certain symbols like, say, Florida Leaf, Family Crest, Secret Handshakes, and things like that, and how these are artists in the energetic field. Well, they're, they're energetic signatures that souls can recognize on a DNA level that this particular DNA lineage is functioning within the system of domination and control and will provide a very different experiences if you're in the upper crustal of those sacred geometries and have a very metaphysical experience, though it may be a dark experience or it may be a light experience because there's an equal 
groupage of light and dark metaphysical experiencers within the system of domination and control. It's a, a lot of the misnomers, it's all the dark guys. Well, guess what? There's a light dictatorship at the, sh at the top there, and that light dictatorship is what creates factions, and that is what the light dictatorship uses for the dark beings as bait to create change, because there's an agreement at that top level that the light and the dark has to work together. What and about they work the together by fighting each in? other. The, the neutral, neutral saying that you need not, the neutral being saying you need not choose any expression. Your relationship to the plan is the full expression that you need during the unity expression. And then when you're done with the unity expression, you move on into polarity. Unity consciousness doesn't leave anyone behind. It doesn't matter if you're the devil or, or, or Karl Marx. Everyone gets a chance in unity consciousness to find remedy and resolve instead of judgment, justice, or violence. When we define ourselves as a living, breathing human being with an energetic body, no other beings can come to interact with us unless they agree to the set of contracts in your local reality or a temporary local reality set up like an air city or the Agartha network where beings can come in with a set of rules that prevent polarity from going to extremes but still allows for self-expression and healing through that experiential body that's in that vibration of air city or Agartha network cities. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is so rich with so much, oh my goodness, so much information. I know you have, I want to switch gears a little bit because I knew you had some things you wanted to tell me personally because when we were talking about, you know, Puerto Rico, I've talked a lot about that on the show um, here because I went there back in uh, August and September and you know, the Bermuda Triangle and all the stuff of the Bermuda Triangle coming online. You had something specifically to tell me about Ponce de Leon, and you're going to tell me on air. Oh, yeah, little old Ponce de Leon. There are times that people, as an individual with a name, gets, gets the benefit, ha, 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 of being identified by fake history as a good guy when, in fact, he led a group of people that were doing very bad things, and yet the physical person never knew it because he was in a belief system where he was following the light. And he got held for the contracts of all the people that got killed from the white invasion. He literally is the spiritual contract holder of everyone being killed from smallpox, everyone being killed from the various conquistadors that came through and were false gods. That was his karmic bad luck life. But as a soul, he knew it, that he would become that lightning rod. And well, you have to realize how his reality, body, how does he fit same, into it? Same, same thing. He, he led the, the, the dream time invasion. See, Ponce de Leon, each Turtle Island was a massive Dreamtime fortress, and it had been many millions of years since the domination and control system could actually normally function in the local <coughs> realities there. You've got to realize, before 800 AD, there were thousands of local realities spread throughout the world that had their own bubbles around them that protected them. And the only way you could travel from one bubble reality to the other was to have DNA or soul family relations to those people in there. And since there were many destructions throughout our world, many people had different DNAs, and it was very difficult to get cross-DNA unless they met in the dream world and had some type of dream DNA exchange. Well, that meant each local reality, tens of thousands, had to be invaded at the dream time level first before a physical person could actually set foot on the shores of a distant land and then begin literally incarnating there. Ponce de Leon is uh -huh. one of those beachhead people that brings the Dreamtime invaders to Puerto Rico. And Puerto Rico is the network hub for all Dreamtime attacks the people at, at Mexico and Turtle Island and below suffered from. That was literally the dark portal of dreams. Okay, and I'm getting, I was dismantling a program around Halloween to do with Captain Hook and Never Never Land and how this actually ties into Puerto Rico. I actually got that that story was written about Puerto Rico and also the uh, the pirates invading and the wench, you know, the, the women and how the sacred feminine was raped with this hook, this Captain Hook yep. into the womb chakra. 
Maybe you can speak Correct. about that. The womb chakra in, in St. Thomas, St. Croix area. That womb yes. chakra had gone active um, about 1620 to about 1830. There were moments where it would become active, and the sea life in there would just become massive and giant. There would be fish that were never seen before, or these giant schools of fish would appear out of nowhere. And it was, it was uh, a local legend that the, the different conquistadors began, began to go and check out, and that's where they discovered that there was a natural uh, portal there, and they brought their versions of their magic and sacred geometry and began to harness it. Well, as they began to harness it, they realized that there were there needed to be contract holders for the changes. And this is, this is what, what created Hook in the first place. They needed to create a myth that would uh, draw dreamers from the German area, or they needed to create uh, Blackbeard to draw dreamers from the Spain area, or needed to create right. uh, Jason and the Argonauts to do one from the Greek dream world, so on and so forth. And then they needed a way to cross that over into the culture of the people who also had visitors to create fake dream links so that the dream invasion of a separate reality could begin so that a real person who actually went there and put a flag in the ground to complete a spiritual invasion. Right, and the, the pirate that was actually the real pirate over there at El Moro was uh, Kofrasi, was the pirate. So. Yeah. I yeah. wonder if the black Correct. beer the came from that, but I got this as a big piece and why Hollywood is playing on this, you know, with the Pirates of the Caribbean and Johnny Depp. I mean, I, I just get there, and it's something about this whole pirate thing and glorifying the pirate and the, you know, the women prostitutes and this and that. It, uh, it, it kind of brings that timeline back, this Hollywood. Well, uh, actually, piracy, piracy was supported by the papacy. Okay? Yes. Piracy was the way that you could literally change the world and allow more religions to come in and religions that brought warriors. It was a, basically a big way to shake people down. You know, the old mafia, you know, the mafia comes up and down the street and you play protection. Protection from whom? The mafia. And if somebody else comes and tries to take protection money from you, they might come and help you. Might. Okay? That's what the, pi the, the piracy issue is about. It was a funding of a true rebel organization because the church learned a long time ago if it did not allow rebel people to live on the world, the world would change faster than they could change. So they created an organization that was highly corrupted, highly corruptible, and then paid them to go and do what they loved, which was bad things. And all they had to do was not tell anyone for many generations in a row. Okay, and that's back how in, these, uh, family, these family seals and sacred crests were used. Because they'd be sinking ships that were carrying energy exchange for value from one country to another, which was invested in the sacred geometry system of domination and control. <laughs> okay, something about Copernicus and Galileo ties into this. The energy for me personally of Copernicus and Galileo came in December 31st of, uh, of 2012 through a Beatles song Because the World is Ground off the Abbey Road album. If you can hold on a second, I have an internet issue. Okay, because the world is round uh, by the Beatles and Copernicus and Galileo. <laughs> Copernicus and Galileo. Well, change in belief system. And the change in belief system didn't go very well for the church. There was so much expression from what Galileo said. And then, can you put Copernicus in? Can you see Copernicus working? Are you there, Missy? Yes. Okay. What do you see Copernicus's work is doing? 
Well, well, what came in for me is the whole song of stre streaming the Beatles song, which John Lennon ties in with this too, and the, the John Lennon pieces. Uh, the world is not just round, it's multidimensional. That's the meaning for me personally, but I just wanted uh, to hear your thoughts of tying it in with the, with the Ponce de Leon thing, because I think it's all around the time of the 1500s. And people believed the world was flat, or maybe they didn't believe it, but they told the lie that the world was flat, even though uh, uh, cultural, you know, the uh, natives knew it was round and multi-dimensional. Okay, I, 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 I get the answer, the nature of your question. There are people that are able to express what's really going on in the world at any moment in history. Thousands. And what Copernicus tried to do was through his writing, without getting caught by the mid-level management of information people that were semi-aware of the world, was to try to tell the world the way the world really works without telling them how it really works so you wouldn't get caught and be burnt at the stake. There are many, many other people that did the same thing. Now, Copernicus is his actual work, the helical model that he came up with, as well as, as the many other astronomers from Galileo to beyond who, who retracted or recanted many of their statements even though that their statements were accurate, they, many of them, discovered alchemy, and that alchemy had a layer of truth that was even more deeper than the, the, what they had read in the stars. When you create a belief system such as the world is flat, and you allow that egoic belief system to continue, to where people will naturally reject it because it's so ridiculously dumb, it makes it very difficult for future soul families to believe anything the system says. So how does yep. Ponce de Leon relate? People have been being fooled to be these contract holders for wars and dream time invasions for millions of years. And he's one of those souls that shouldn't have been fooled and was fooled. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's Simple very that. interesting. And it ties into Sarasota because the Spanish invasion was also in, in Florida, and that's why I wanted to bring these well, up. Well, that's where they were now, going to find the waters of life. They were going to find the fountain of youth. Yep. Which, oddly, Disney was built on top of. Yep. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. All right. And now All of those another one. fountain of youth. Another one that you wanted to tell me personally was Abraham Lincoln. You know, we have uh, Thanksgiving coming up. Oh, and then we also have to talk about the Three Stooges show, too. But we have Thanksgiving coming up, and you said it was going to probably be a Three Stooges show around Thanksgiving and Christmas. So I do want you to identify that and talk about that. But this also ties in with Abraham Lincoln because Abraham Lincoln, when people celebrate Thanksgiving, whether they know it or not, they're celebrating uh, as it was installed into the grid, at least for when I look at the hologram, they are celebrating the end of the Civil War. And in unawareness, it's actually the reverse of what they think it is. If you can explain from the Akashic so Records what I'm trying to say. First thing first, Abraham Lincoln was the head of the Illuminati at that time. The, the throne of the Illuminati had been abdicated by the Gutenbergs early 1830, and it, it had jumped around between other areas until finally it settled in America, and there was a, a battle for trade and cotton and all the other things that were controlling the rest of the part of the world. And Lincoln literally represents the head of the Illuminati, an Illuminati that was trying to make a turn to be good, but was infested with some of the worst people possible. You know, the child abuse rings were, were very much in effect there. There were no laws against rape or violence to women, and it was very common for very negative entities to be fully functional in any government organization. Well, Lincoln was the person that was elected via this weird system of global elections through different Illuminati members to be essentially the first global leader of all of the different factions that were trying to shape their local realities and create trade with other local realities so they could keep their local reality and domination and control. There was the counter movement, the secessionist movement, which was meant to free people which was part of the Union's North, and then the South was to keep people enslaved, which was to create to make sure that there was the debt 
that they could keep over people. And that was the big war at the upper levels of this Illuminati faction, how to keep debt to keep people in, in the reincarnation grid versus how to free people so that they could bring even more people into different levels of domination and control so they could harvest entities that were coming into an industrial age and then into a mega industrial age of the 50s and 60s and 1950s and 60s. So that level of energy that was Lincoln had to be a very powerful spirit, so therefore he was the head of the Illuminati, the first incarnation through, of the American experience. And Thanksgiving was the root for this reversal grid to say that we were nice people instead of people that bloodily invaded this world, this, this planet here, this side of the planet, and then broke our own contracts, vows, and trade agreements we had with these people and took their lands over. Mm -hmm. That's the nature of the reversal grid. You know, Native Americans yes. don't celebrate Thanksgiving. Why not? That's their time they got massacred. Exactly. Can now, can you them? also uh, see uh, explain how the Civil War, uh, how did that get installed into the grid from your knowingness? Uh, for, I mean, because to, to uh, me it's so ridiculous that brother would fight against brother. The North would fight against uh, its you know, the, the North would fight it, against the South. It, it's so that's stupid. That's the propaganda. That's the propaganda that made it through history. In reality, the, the indigenous species from northern Canada to southern tip of Peru had gathered in Dreamtime societies and began very special Dreamtime dances to literally kick off the spiritual invasion of white man, of the white eyes. And the Civil War was started to cause death at a big scale so that the spiritual changes of the shamans from the north to the tip of Alaska to the south of Peru actually couldn't change the inter incarnation grid. So they needed to start a war really quick that would resolve some common issues within the Illuminati control grid itself. And thus they were able to anchor the energies through the ending of the Civil War and through the enforcement of reconstruction on the south, which kept torture, which kept many of the, the negative things against people. You know, for 20 years, the South had no government, had no representation, yet there, there were these false senators signing agreements and laws that we still abide by today. So higher, how is that a unified constitution in any way, shape, or form? It's not, because the energy of the constitution had already been hijacked decades before the Civil War. And, you yeah, know, the and preamble even is the, the Revolutionary War, trust. too. Right. Yeah, you know, the our preamble is nothing more than it's a spent it's a trust. You know, in tr in God we trust. They created a trust for people to function in. When in fact, all they had to do is hijack the trust at an energy level. Therefore, the people have no way to exchange energy between each other. No exchange for value system. Mm -hmm. Thus, allows the banks to be at your local street corner. And when you have a bank, it's a local street corner, and it uses sacred geometry. Therefore, you have the basics of an energy harvesting system through the creation of debt that's affecting your karma or affecting your spiritual contracts. When, in fact, debt is something we create that means nothing. It means nothing. We're, we're unlimited, universal, co-creating beings. And that these little pieces you, of cotton paper have full, full control over us. Can you talk originally about the, uh, the original design of gold and silver as currency before the uh, fiat money system? I mean, what's the symbology from what uh, you're looking at with the gold and silver? Good question. For an energetic exchange for value system to operate in domination and control, something actually has to represent the money. Gold and silver were used because gold and silver can actually house the energy. And then that energy can be removed from them and put through a ritual or ceremonial system that makes that energy acceptable to a sacred geometry system, such as energy harvesting or spirit creation or incarnation grid or reincarnation grid. There's technology spread all over our world that converts this exchange for value energy into energy that the system can use to, to empower etheric satellites or to create reality-altering events in different high-energy places that are around different chakra points of the Earth. 
So gold and silver was the concept of belief system that literally held the energy for all exchange for value. That's why you had gold reserves, because literally that's where the power of the nation resided. When you transi transitioned away from gold and began taking the gold away and changing the laws, our spirits looked for someplace else to contractually hold the energy, which became the copper, the, the, the cotton paper dollars. And as they're transitioning away from cotton dollars to digital money, it is the actual uh, infrastructure that holds the, the actual internet, that holds our exchange for value system, which holds the contractual energy of exchange for value. Can you talk about a true organic exchange for value as opposed to what we have now? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the word organic. As being someone that reads the Akashic Record, it becomes very easy for one word to truly change the full meaning and expression of something that has an infinite expression. So what does organic mean? What does organic mean? Uh, well, let's say maybe in a note, maybe even a better word than organic would be a no-time expression of value system, so it's in the moment, that's what I mean, mm -hmm. that's kind of what I mean by organic, you know, natural. Well, I actually get the nature of the question. There are these people that observe the organic timelines, the organic acacia records, and what they're really saying is the system of domination control is not organic. Well, when in fact it is. There's a difference in belief systems about how the system of domination control was installed, and that's some of the fundamental beliefs people get from their skin suits and their light body DNA expression, is trying to resolve paradox of how domination control got us to create more paradoxes within ourselves. So uh -huh. when it comes to an organic expression of exchange for value, it's when you have the heartbeat of the earth inside your heartbeat, through a shamanic metaphor, heartbeat of Earth Mother, and that means you've achieved resonance with the Earth sentience, and that anyone that you do exchange for value with is also in resonance with Earth expression, you will have a natural expression that has an exchange for value that has no representation, because the Earth is the medium of the infinite energy. So there will be no exchange of anything. No oh, I love exchange it. Other than that's all beautiful. I love it. To know it. That's, that's it. That's your organic exchange. Just as trees give off carbon dioxide, convert, you know, photosynthesis into carbon dioxide or oxygen or so on and so forth, it will be as natural as that for us. Mm-hmm. That's happening more and more. Um, I, I want to see more of that. I Me too. I expect to see more of it. That's what I talked about in Return to Land is the creation of communities. And when Hope and both Chris stood up and started how, how talking about everybody's toolbox coming together, I put my toolbox on the table. Hope put her toolbox on the table. Chris put her toolbox on the table. So on and so forth until finally we have a giant toolbox of systems that people can come to learn from to gain their sovereignty and then begin to form communities of like-minded people who want to retain their sovereignty and begin to tell the government, you have overstepped your bounds, and on a spiritual level, we remove all of our energy from you and invest it into our private communities that are separate of you. And there are ways and systems and a way to do that within our, our living organic system of domination control to make yourself completely sovereign from the system. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the other side of the galactic historian. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of other worlds have come through domination and control. We just happen to be the, the, the cream of the crop, the best of the best graduates who have ever been through domination and control before. And they put everything, including the kitchen sink, at a multidimensional level at us. And now we're claiming sovereignty at a macro scale, because we're macro multidimensional entities who have been reduced to a third dimensional, third density, single expression world. And we're about to awaken to our full multidimensional selves on a planet that is meant to modify our multidimensionalism by a million fold. Yeah, we've had it up to our eyeballs. It's time. Yeah, let's talk about the Three okay. Stooges. You say this is going to play out as a Three Stooges show. It already is, but let, let's hear a little bit more about what you have to say about that. 
Well, the Three Stooges. Well, we just had a government shutdown. You know, that, that's like Mo trying to go put the two fingers into Larry's eye, and Larry putting up the finger and blocking him, and Shemp coming around the corner and hitting, hitting, uh, hitting Obama in the ass with a, with a paddle. Okay? <laughs> that was the first part. Okay? Now we have... Yep. Now we have the law firm of Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe. <laughs> All right? And if you, anybody that watches Three Stooges, anytime they need lawyers, they go to this literally law office, and it shows on the glass window painted on law firm, Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe. So it's now down to the law. It's how they're going to cheat us, and our, it's Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe. They're going to try to use the law to occupy our minds so that the sum up of this end of the year is going to be we had great change, when in fact we had no change whatsoever. No one in the banking industry has been arrested. No one at the United Nations level has been arrested. None of this propaganda that they're saying is coming true. They can't start a war in Syria, and therefore the system begins to look what I call the Baghdad bomb moments. Are you familiar with the right, term Baghdad they, bomb? It, yep, and they shut it down to drink beer and eat pizza and raise the debt ceiling. Exactly. <laughs> so Baghdad Bob is literally an actual person that was in the in the at the Iraqi political state TV during the first Gulf War. I'm sorry, the second Gulf War, where he was broadcasting live a celebration of the Amer the defeat of the American people. So there's all these paid actors that were in this little square celebrating in joy, and all of a sudden around the corner comes an American tank in the center of Baghdad, and the guy drops his, drops his microphone and runs as the video camera records this American tank going and taking over the party. That is what our <laughs> news system is going to look like, Baghdad Bob moments, where literally you're going to have people on the news that simply say, I cannot say these lies anymore, quitting on air. People that are going to share video links that they've been holding, you know, people that have been retired news agents since the 1980s, where they've saved, saved UFO footage that came to their office that didn't get sweeped by the different CIA agents. People are just going to start saying no, 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 no. And you cannot stop things from going viral, but they have systems that sure as hell make them, make them try. Can't stop dream kids from dreaming together or sharing their dreams. You can't stop a comedian that starts a fart joke that goes around the world. Mm -hmm. You can't stop a fruit vendor who sets himself on fire that ignites a whole a whole community of people throughout the Arab areas. Three Stooges. They're going to try to cover one thing up and expose twenty other things. And then they're going to try to cover one thing up, and they're not going to uncover it, and it's going to expose, and expose the proverbial dress. And there's the <laughs> speeches over and over again. So when it comes to things like this grid shutdown, I mean, no, no matter what, this is a false flag event. You know, all these are false flag events, but they call them drills. And what have you been shown I like to, about? I, I like to call them false light worker drills where these light workers create this event like a comet or a, or a meteor and everyone's preparing for the end like a fire drill or a end of the world drill and you have all these different light workers that are saying it's the end, it's the end, or this comet's this the end, this comet means this, and then the conspiracy theorists pick up this and they just create more and more fear until they empower that object to have fear and then it passes by and they've harvested all that fear energy off of you and then they're going to wait a couple more months so they tell you about the next sphere event and the next sphere event. Well, they're mining less and less and less off of every comet and less and less off of every shooting and less and less off of every government shutdown. The people just have uh -huh. no energy left to give. So these comets, they are nothing more than something that's been set in the timeline to anchor a belief system's energy off of. That's it. That's my truth about that. These comets mean nothing other than fear events to create energy to harvest you off of. Stop paying attention to them. Stop sharing them on Facebook. Nothing's going to happen. The comet's going to go by just like the 93 other ones they predicted in the last 120 years. Mm -hmm. Okay? I can probably count seven comets from this year, ten comets from 2012 that are all supposed to end the world, are all supposed to trigger events, all promoted by light workers. Mm -hmm. 
So who's got the so master plan So what do you recommend? Here? We just stay in the neutral, but the neut neutral observation of everything we're looking at is what we need to do. Give it no energy. You can still observe it in polarity and give it no energy. It's just harder when you're not in the neutral position. Okay. Best to be in What's the neutral really position when looking at things. What's feeding the children? Right. Mm -hmm. So many of these events are literally just created as energy harvesting systems. So many people are waking up and have all this energy and don't know what to do with it. Instead of going to a bookstore and picking a book up and beginning their creational energy with that, or following the, the natural path of the earth, or finding something that breaks the cycle of materialism and consumerism in them, people are trapped into what do you do with the belief system that limits you from believing. Mm -hmm. Well, you have that's to create events. That's why you said we're going to need, a, like, I don't know if you said a billion healers, but you said we're going to need a lot of healers as people start to wake up. So why don't you talk a little bit about how that can a billion help. Healers. We're going to need a billion healers because there are some people in this world that have gone through the worst of the worst of the experience many times over. And they're going to need very special people to come forward and create um, healing spaces so that these healers that are coming forward, these billion healers that are coming forward, have a space to operate in that's clean of psychic parasites or the psychic entities that other people that are coming to heal from are going to need to be healed from. So much of our world is infested by ancestral karma that attracts parasites. These billion healers are going to essentially be massive cleaners. They're going to have energy techniques that power wash the outer aura and then power wash the inner aura. And then the person's going to go through an intestinal detox so they can actually alchemize the energy of the ancestral karma and get it out of their DNA matrix. Uh -huh. Yes, detoxing is very important. Mm -hmm. On the soul level, too. The soul yes. the souls has a lot of damage to it in the system. And those billion healers, that's a seven, one to seven, seven to one ratio. That means one healer to every seven people. You know, some people are going to require 30 or 40 healers. Like some of the people that have been in the time travel wars as part of, you know, the Mars Project or the different government time travel projects, they needed 100 or 200 healers from spread across the galaxy who are specialists in timeline surgery for them for that soul to come back together. And people are going to have to learn, what's my special talent in healing? Is it holding space so that high vibration entities and beings can do their micro or macro work as a healer on an individual outside of time? Mm -hmm. Now, when we were at the event in Sarasota, I remember you, when you were speaking, you said to remove your citizenship from Lumeria and Atlantis, and I love that, yes. but I would love for you to explain to the listening audience what that's about and why. Um, well, there are many reasons why. As long as you have agreements with a the government, they can do things that manipulate time. Lemuria and Atlantis are stuck in a concept where they're trying to return themselves to a right and perfect timeline that's been erased so many times that it's impossible. It's created a paradox for them to actually return to their right and perfect timeline. And there are organizations and governments and parts of government organizations that have survived time travel events, uncreational events, that are still using your consent from 40 million years ago to create a right and perfect timeline, even though they know, know at a core of a belief system it is impossible for them to get back to a timeline. Therefore, they are still using your consent to use timeline wars, timeline genocide, as a creational event for you in service for you. So when you begin to revoke your contract files and agreements with the government, that means that those individuals that are making decisions on your, on your behalf outside of time can no longer do that. That's what that means. You don't end the event. You don't change the nature of the people that you know and love back then. You stop the government of them from acting outside of time. I love it. I did it. That's for sure. Now, I also want to see, because uh, I was getting this information last year as I was looking at Christmas and the Northern Hemisphere and the solstice and all this information about obelisks and Nimrod came in that 
Christmas was connected to Nimrod and was connected to Atlantis and connected to bringing back the Atlantean timeline. And I even uh, had a synchronicity of picking up a brochure from NASA saying that Atlantis, the space shuttle, would return in 2013. Hmm. That's a lot of connections there. And what I'm going to say is, I don't think that that system reaches like that. I think the web of your description is more related to how the grids have changed and how yeah. we have to perceive the 3D aspect of the change in grid that ultimately when you change a grid, if you change the equation, the end of the equation is different and literally you perceive the difference in timelines, the difference in changes through these different grids because changes that are being made in a fluid version of time. Yes. So Something to do also with magnetic north is not true magnetic north and all that kind of stuff, too. Well, and neither is the precession of the Earth. The precession of the Earth isn't true. It's just a belief system we all were told that's real. We've been passed on for generations and generations. That's why we're another, that's the other reason why our world is in separation. Magnetic north isn't the real magnetic north. Therefore, if you're not at magnetic north, it makes it very hard to find an aurora borealis. That's the most obvious way to fool a people that goes to the top of the planet to dream. Tilt the top of the planet. <laughs> Change the position of the well, stars so they look different. I think you also said once, I don't know if it was on Lance's show, that actually Earth, I don't know if you said it this way, Earth and the entire galaxy was teleported to a different place. Earth was teleported 12 separate times before it was brought into this solar system. Its 12th teleport was into this solar system. And you would capture this world, destroy the timeline on it, and then teleport the world someplace else so the souls that were kicked off the surface timeline couldn't rapidly incarnate into the new surface timeline. They had to take the time and travel the void between space of the teleportation. You see how that works? We live in a galactic ascension machine. There's our 66 prime planets in our solar system, and all of those represent the prime lines of timeline travel genocide that spread out among the universe. <coughs> they took all 66 planets creating timeline genocide, our timeline issues with DNA, 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 DNA um, production throughout the different planets or DNA being passed on, they put them all into one solar system so all the souls that were trying to resolve timeline karma would migrate to one spot in the universe. And that spot was very heavily protected by many layers of macro, macro quarantine fields that prevented the timeline concepts from creating uncreational events that affected the rest of the universe. If you have a DNA sequence from Lemuria that is passed into 10, 20, or 30 species because the species interbreeding, and someone goes back and erases that, well, that person that actually created that first interbred species, all of those other ones that are based off of that DNA get erased too. That's called an uncreational event. So these 66 planets were put here in this solar system, and Earth was, the, was basically where you would get the PhD in the School of Hard Knocks of Timeline Genocide and where you could resolve the greatest amount of karma with it. Earth was at the peak of that 66 planets. The last teleportation, 12th teleportation, brought it here. The 11 previous ones were the tug of war between the forces of light and the forces of darkness who were using the planet for different purposes of creation and uncreation other than Earth's original purpose, which was to be a galactic seed planet, which was to make trillions of trees and then to psychically teleport them to the surface of another world with a dirt layer and instantly create a microorganism system that the planet can go right away and begin to function with at a spiritual level or the implementation of a trillion squirrels, a billion trees, so on and so forth, until finally continents were suddenly populated with sentient, ex sentient bodies that were either waiting for something to come in or would literally go through the incarnation direct into a tree process or the fish process or the squirrel process through the dreaming mind of the planet, which would give the foundational reality which was based in unity consciousness before they brought in a high consciousness species like a skin suit for human beings or advanced skin suits like whales or dolphins. Hmm. 
high consciousness species. Now, wow. I know that's a lot to take in. Some of this stuff, you know, I've spoken about different layers of this on different shows. And for those of you that are experienced out there, use your heart discernment. Uh, be very, very specific here. Some of the information that I bring up is, is very, very extreme when it comes to planetary creation. And for that purpose is the galactic historian. So people begin to understand how important this world is and what our service to this world will be during the cleanup process as well as the creation process during that cleanup process so we can help clean up the pollution, the DNA pollution of billions of other worlds who have been trying to copy our DNA and doing a very bad job at it. Many of them have been cut off from a tree of life and can no longer have new souls incarnate into their soul families. They literally have to find very old souls to come and live into their species which makes their species dwindle in population. As many as 3,000 different, different alien species are within three or five years of death right now, total, total extinction, if they cannot find a way to relink to their sex organs because they genetically bred uh, uh, sex organs out of themselves and thus have no tree of life. Wow. Oh, there, yeah, this is just so rich with information. Now, you are talking about also on other shows that there will be other galactic historians that will step up to the plate eventually. Can you talk about this? How would somebody even know if they were a galactic historian? Well, they would know by the volume of information that they have. Um, they would have been going through this experience for many years, and it gets to a point where your soul gets through this test. My particular test was at a baseball game when I was very young, and I knew at some point I would be given the opportunity to say yes or no if I determined if I wanted that experience as an older soul that had gone through the process of doing this. I had, to gone through, I had to go through many meeting stages with different soul families so that I could understand why my perspective was so different. Anyone that's going through that process now, and if you are listening, and I am aware of the two that have the choice after me, it's not easy, but it's really rewarding. Make sure you take the time to learn social skills because there are going to be thousands of people who are going to ask you endless amounts of questions. Some questions try to trap your perspective, and you have to define the context for them. That's the hardest job about the galactic historian is defining the context of, a, of information especially if the being has no reference of that context that they even exist in. So for now, those that are going to be there, you, you will know. You will just know. How do you integrate this information into your personality of Andrew? Uh, that's, 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 that's 20 years of being a psychic reader, 20 years of living a life in the metaphysical community, 20 years of living a ritual and a ceremonial life, sometimes doing a really good job at it and sometimes doing a really bad job at it, and sometimes not giving a crap at all. Honestly, as a human being, I learned very early on I do not want to know everything. So much that I do not want to know everything because it will ruin my experience as a human here. I'm a finite being. And this finite being has a limit into which he perceives everything. And you make a choice to select a theme. And the theme that my soul selected is galactic history. And everything that falls in between in which the way they've changed our reality rules to confuse us to believe in one set of beliefs instead of an infinite belief system. Yep. Absolutely. Now, we have somebody, you know, I don't normally take calls on the show, but if you, I feel that maybe I want to take this call if you would like that, and we can set parameters okay. for if the person has a question. Yeah, let's, let's, let's limit it to galactic historian questions. This is not for personal readings. Um, I've, I've done some personal reading shows, and they took off a lot, but for these shows, these are no personal readings. This is just galactic history show questions. Yes. Oh, hello, Eric. So it's six one two. You're on the air. <laughs> Hi, you guys. Missy and Andrew. Hi, I love you. It's Elizabeth. I'm just listening. Hey, Elizabeth. Uh, <laughs> uh, I miss you guys. I'm I'm glad to hear both of you tonight. So I'm just listening, and uh, maybe I'll ask Andrew. What are the energies coming up? What What should we prepare for? 
I like yeah. it. Uh, get popcorn or some other type of decadent GMO delight so that you can herald in the new age by crapping out your GMO delight. <laughs> So it's going to be more of the Three Stooges. Huh? It's more of the Three Stooges. And us as, as the light worker community, we have to stop, start breaking the fashion, invite friends, people over for dinner, you know, start sharing time with each other, get to know them, because everyone's going to be important. Every light worker that's put a book out there that, that's got an audience is going to be important. We're going to need a billion healers. There's not enough of us out there. Share techniques. Share field cleaning techniques. Share concepts. Start sharing time together. You know, we're at this critical stage where the communities that we make now are the communities that make the biggest waves in the future. Okay, I want to address uh, a couple of the harder issues to do with uh, siphoning of energy and, and dark attacks. Before we get into, I want to ask you some things about where the alternative media is going, because sometimes when you break bread uh, with people and you invite people in, sometimes, most of the time not, but sometimes something bad could happen physically. Can you address that a little bit? And that's because we don't operate under the fundamental rules of humankind, which is when we meet to break bread in spiritual or physical situations, we operate from a unified field of creation in which we started a ceremony that has rules that says we will not deceive or siphon energy off of each other. Yes. We don't start meeting that way. That has been taken away from us because our oral historians who knew the truth about greeting ceremonies knew that when you greet new groups of people, especially ancestors who haven't met in a long time, there is ancestral karma. And you can neutralize that ancestral karma at that bread-breaking moment by saying the right words with the right combination of vibration and intonation so that energy has no space with inside that moment of breaking bread. Can you address either soul or monad karma? Like, say you meet somebody, they're friends, you, ha you have a, some kind of blow-up, and it's just, it's just never the same because it ties into some of these other timelines. And, and you know, it just, it, it, sometimes people can't heal these. The other timelines make the doorway for the implants to alter your contracts or to alter the architecture foundation or the archetype foundations that are in your DNA. If you're in a, in a common DNA skin suit that is Pleiadian and Andromeda and Octarian in it, or if you're in a rare skin suit that's Octarian and in, in, in Zavora, you, you have a different set of programs that are installed in you that turn you rebellious against non-soul family or soul family memories that leads you into a separation. All of these architecture programs and fine print contracts are meant to move you away from soul family or to surround yourself by such low vibrational people in, in expression who are stuck in the reincarnation brain. Therefore, you can never go internal or have a lifetime of internal release and reprieve and then find reciprocity, remedy, and resolve with your soul contract before you die and have a life review. The big trick of the of, of reincarnation grid is you don't have a full life review, a full soul life review. You barely get a full review of this lifetime before you're kicked back in with the same contracts. Okay, I have seen the uh, false white light tunnel, and to me it actually looks like going in some inside one of these uh, mercury light bulbs. This, this cozy white light. I mean, I, I, I've seen aspects of myself actually working on this uh, false white light tunnel. Can you address this from the Kashuk records? Well, if there's a false white light tunnel, that means there's false light beings and false dark beings. So now we're in the nature of a question. It is, do you understand the context that you are a part of that context? Mm -hmm. So, false light beings means there's false dark beings. What's a false dark being? Right. What's a false light being? False sacred so geometry. Do they even work one. with the forces of light or darkness if they're false? Or are they, are they separate planetary entities that are promoting 
concepts within light and dark to create polarity, to create or to catalyze soul families into some type of very negative or positive action. And this is where planetary minds can affect people, like our good old boy Saturn. Okay? Uh -huh. Saturn is not a nice planet. And there's many, many people that can attest to different encounters with the Saturn mindset. Saturn has an ex-wife named Alona, who's creating the, the triad of male-female argument energy right now. Alona was the sister of Earth. They shared Saturn as a boyfriend. Boy, Saturn tried to, have, tried to have a shotgun wedding with Earth and take domination and control of Earth and make Earth one of its literal rings. All the sentient life that would have existed on Earth would have become in cold soul storage as a part of a ring around Saturn. So that's what Saturn does. It dominates and controls worlds and takes the sentience of the planet and turns it into an energetic ring. And the destruction of the planet creates matter pieces that have become crushed into dust. And those dust hold, hold infinite amount of space for infinite amount of worlds that are in cold storage that can be used at any time for the invasion of another planet. That's Saturn. We are going into the overtime, so people that uh, may not hear this, but they'll hear it on the podcast, but it looks like they're still in the chat room, so maybe they still are hearing it. I don't know why I'm getting this, but something about Lord of the Rings. <laughs> mm -hmm. Lord of the Rings? Is it Lord of the Rings? I, I just thought of Lord of the Rings, and you were talking about Saturn and... The, the precious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, planetary minds are, are one of those things. I know the ES groups that talk about planetary logos and stuff. It's a real thing. They really do exist. And at times they are the light beings or the, they are the false light beings or the false dark beings or creating these tunnels to get you off of a world and to ascend into their world or descend into their world. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, and then there's yeah. other beings who literally have created a false light system through an artificial matrix that keeps you in a regurgitating system stuck of reincarnation that's all run by technology. Yes, that's exactly it. Yep. So now I that just we find see that it context, interesting when I see this um, artificial thing that looks like a mercury light bulb and they're really, you know, propagating and trying to sell these mercury light bulbs. <laughs> they want you to get you loose used to that wavelength. Mm -hmm. So you recognize it as safe because it's in your home all the time. Mm -hmm. And it is not, that is for sure. It is not. It is so what are your thoughts with the alternative media now and where it's going and closing here until we can discuss this until it, well, we have extra time. I don't know how long it, it, we have. It's just we're, we're going over, but it's, it's just whatever it is. So I, I can go for about another, another 15 minutes, and then we'll, we'll, call, we'll, call, we'll, we'll end it up there. I've, I've been having a okay. busy talk day today, so I'll try to save my voice for a little okay. bit later on. Um, let's, how do, I, how do I put this? You're familiar with the three walking and energy shows, right? Yes. Those three shows were a very distinct set of energy shows. This show that I did with you is very, very distinct. There's material that has been brought up on purpose at a, an 11-11 date. And yes. this 11-11 date represents a consciousness spike. And I spoke frequently in both in all the walking and energy shows about co various consciousness spikes that were left in our world. We're down to about six consciousness spikes left between now and the end of the year. And those consciousness spikes are, are to awaken to us that there's not a 12-month cycle that we exist on. There's a 13th month, a shadow month that they've been hiding from us. And this expression is what's going to come up in January, where people are going to get this extra month of ceremonial dream time, because that 13th month was to honor the planet and keep you in symbiotic connection to keep your skin suit technology in alignment and attunement with the Earth's full yearly expression. Mm -hmm. This is something I've never spoken about on any other shows, and I'm doing it specifically on this show because it's going to be expanded many-fold over the next six weeks of how this 13th month relates to the 13 grandmothers or the 13 clan mothers that were the original sacred feminine representation of the spirit world for how feminine-born spirits were going to be giving birth to, to different en energy entities. 
And that is something that's going to be coming forward. Very, very many, quite a few women are going to be giving their miracle birth having never had, had an intercourse with a man. Their womb is going to become full and they'll give birth to babies very fast. And medical science will not know what to do with them. And it'll be up to those women to choose a spiritual life and a spiritual expression to realize that that is the gift from Earth to them to help resolve the great ancestral karmas that are going on. Many of these children that are going to be born are going to be karma resolvers. Mm-hmm. Could this explain also why some of us may have been sleeping a lot and were tired a lot these past couple weeks? Correct. Like, just can't get enough sleep. And the system has been harvesting the people of energy so much that there's nothing less for them to take. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what other kind of questions do you have? Do you know what's in the works with uh, Chris and Hope and what they're working on lately? Um, they're putting together the whole project for the billion dollar uh, crowdfunding campaign as well as we're working to put the sovereignty movement side of it, consensus software, sovereignty consensus software, voting software for how to use the billion dollar plan to help the people of the world. I believe HOPE has 86 projects that are set up ready for funding. Um, we're putting together the head group um, that's going to involve Teal Scott as part of, part of the five group of women that come together that help put together these projects and promote them. Um, kind of a, like an oversight committee that that brings women together, the different women 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 groups together, um, to help promote more unity amongst people. Um, Chris is working on the sovereignty aspect, and he and I will be doing a series of shows on that, as well as expanding uh, into the I am presence concepts and mighty I am self and more contract removals. Uh, and then from there, we'll be doing some kind of tour of the United States and Australia. Um, and that tour will be putting the communities together. We have a number of communities that have already, already volunteered space for us to put together the, the first trial communities of coming together under this big fund to create community leaders and community training scenarios so that people can take, take these techniques home and start communities and unities in their, in their local neighborhoods. So what do you recommend that people do in the meantime for their own healing besides like the, the detoxing and healing? And well, honestly, what, what? honestly, it comes down, to, comes down to clearing your energy field daily. That's, that's the first thing. Literally returning yourself to, to your, root, your root energy and allowing your root energy to expand out and clear out any negative energies, entities, or parasites that may have come to you through the toxic environment we live in. Take an active moment to cleanse your house of energies and entities. Clear out your yard, honestly, too, up to the telephone poles or up to the mailbox, because those are the entrances into your property. And any other obvious entrances onto your property, you know, roads or trails or something, say that this is my sovereign expression space. Begin to do contract revocations on the system of domination and control. I have three examples that are out, and there are many thousands of others that have created their own. I very much encourage people to write their own contract revocations on the entire system of the world they live in. When it comes to your personal expression, you know, domination and control affects everyone differently. And therefore, certain things need to be expressed more from certain perspectives. Do that once a day. You know, walk your land once a day. If you can't do that, walk it once a week. If you can't even walk it once a week, you have to ask, where is your, where is your linkage to the earth? If you can't, maybe it's time to go and have a fire ceremony or a water wheel ceremony and reconnect yourself to the land, reconnect yourself to the energies of, of the land that you live on. And that's a way to look through it, a way to see through the perceptions of, of full self instead of dominated and controlled self. Yeah, I love that. I claim the sovereignty for all my animals on my property, too. All the squirrels and crows that come in my yard, and uh, everybody gets along in my yard. Right. When you set up the rules in your local reality, the animal spirits will follow them because they're following universal law. And you're following universal law by stating your sovereign free will and what, what are your expectations and limitations in your world. 
By doing that, you have stated sovereignty. And by stating sovereignty, the world can co-create with you under those sovereign rules. And you will not run mm -hmm. into situations where entities will take energy from you. You know, like today, after doing raking and blowing, I just knew today was a, a day of, it could be a lot of hits. So I went around with salt on my property, setting intention, spreading salt all over my property today. Salt, salt's the great neutralizer, one of those wonderful things that can be used to benefit ceremonial energies quite a bit. Um, I actually, during this broadcast, have a 50-pound bag of uh, ground-up pink Himalayan salt that was donated to me by somebody I met here in Mount Shasta. And let me tell you, this thing's extremely purifying for this whole house, let alone just sitting next to it for this broadcast. That's what I used today was the pink Himalayan salt in my yard and also in my bath. I, ha I was using that. Yeah, now, what do time. you specifically do to go into the dream time? Do you have a specific uh, ritual or whatever it is that you do to protect your sleep space? Um. I have many layers of protection on my sleep space, and it starts as the multidimensional me knowing where the edges of my property are and defining at an energy level by creating a psychic pheromone at the four corners that say, this is my, the edge of my four corners of my reality, and then going visiting those four corners and actually making offers, offerings to those energies that I put there. That creates the two layers. And then there are several other layers between the four corners and my bed that define how entities can operate within my energy field or the energy field of the property that I'm operating on. And having that many layers defines who can function with you and who can't. And the really crafty negative ones will use other people's energies to get a backdoor a system in. And my sleeping area, which is my sacred space, has the greatest protection. There's my ceremonial objects that protect me, as well as the different protective objects that I've created and I've spread around the house in case I decide to fall asleep on the couch or, you know, whatever. You know, I won't fully describe everything because, you know, there are people that are listening that could use that against me. And that's them oh, yeah. projecting. And projections as, right. as, as radio hosts or people that are in the public eye or even the private eye can be very detrimental to a person's health. You know, the light worker community is well, some of the worst projectors in the world. Just look at the negative Facebook comments over somebody who's presenting their truth. And you have somebody that doesn't believe in their truth and believes there's only one other truth in the whole universe, and they begin bashing them. That is an example of human projection. And our internet system is completely interlinked with our world. And therefore, people will begin to learn we are always projecting on people. And we must begin to end that habit pattern. Yes, and, and, I, and I appreciate that. And I just wanted um, people to get some ideas of a way they can claim their sovereignty in their sacred space before sleeping. It's very important. I do this every night. Because if I don't do it, I don't sleep good, you know, if something happens. And in a motel, if you're in a motel or somewhere else that's not your regular space, you really have to fortify and strengthen the space where you are so you can get decent sleep so nothing can get in when you're sleeping. Yeah. Um, I, I do similar things like that, but I have... I have um a series of prayers that I say before I go to bed, mental prayers and, and sometimes out loud prayers and stuff that reinforces the system of defenses and defenses that I've created in a dream world. And also I go I go right to the Aurora Borealis, which has the ancestral protections to it and over my physical body also. And if people start to learn to to go to the Aurora Borealis and communicate with their ancestors, they will be able to gain a lot more layers of protection over their physical body. And then the stuff that they do to protect their physical body, like all their rituals, like four corners or protecting your bed, so on and so forth, become infinitely more effective. Yes. Absolutely. So, Andrew, what else is going to be on your plate in the next few weeks into the uh, end of this year? Um, I'll be doing some I am present. I'll be doing some I Am Presence webinar, uh, webinars and seminars coming up here in December. Um, I will be putting on a series of events here at Mount Shasta that will be, be about putting together communities as well as some uh, psychic experience uh, systems that I've put together where people will be able to get ceremonial time 
um, time to do mental quests, not necessarily full vision quests, but heart quests that they can do in a period of four days. They can learn about fire shamanism, water shamanism, and learning, teaching people how to use the technology of their skin suit to interact with the earth, as well as some sovereignty workshops that will be coming up uh, in January. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. And how can somebody get a hold of the, you if they want to get a hold of you? For these they can go to my website, Andrew Bart. They can go to my website, andrewbartis.com, and they have a, a contact form to fill out as well as a guest book. Um, fill out the contact form if you're interested in getting a reading. Well, I have a tremendous backlog of readings right now. I'm trying to do as many as I can do each month and balance the number of interviews. Um, I have a book coming up. Um, I'm not exactly sure when it's all going to be finished, as well as a, another series of videos that I'll be doing with uh, a, a number of other people, including Lance White and Chris and Hope. Mm -hmm. Well, Andrew, I just think it's been awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Can't wait to get you back on the show again, and I hope I get to see you again in the physical real soon, too. That oh, you, you get will. You will. We're all, we're all, we're all coming on. together. We're all coming together, Missy, and we're going to have a blast. Yeah, we are. If anybody needs to email me, please send me an email at hill, H-I-L-L, night, N-I-T-E, vision, V-I-S-I-O-N, at gmail.com, hill, night, vision, at gmail.com, and also check out the Sunshine Simple Generator for the home, www.sunshinesimple.com. Thank you again, Andrew, so much. I really appreciate it, and this is going to be rich. Go back and listen to the podcast. So you have a great uh, night, and I'll talk to you soon. And to everybody else, happy trails to you till we meet again. Namaste. Take care, Andrew. Thanks again. Take care, everyone. Okay, bye.